Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about beam theory. We have two major beam theory, Euler Bernoulli and Timoshenko. Timoshenko is more complete, more accurate, but it's complex, so more commonly we use Euler Bernoulli. Euler Bernoulli is based on two assumptions. One is that the cross section is always perpendicular to the bending line, so if this is the cross section, it's perpendicular to the bending line. And the other assumption is that it neglects the effect of shear deformation. So all the deflection that we have in a beam is due to bending moment, not the shear force. So when we have these two assumptions, like any other assumptions, we are introducing error into our system. That error causes our beam to be stiffer. So Euler Bernoulli overestimates the stiffness of our beam, therefore it underestimates the deflection. And it's only applicable to a slender beams, long and thin beams. But Timoshenko, because it does not have those assumptions, so it's more accurate. And if our beam is uh, stubby, short and fat, we have to use Timoshenko beam for more accurate result. Uh, one criterion that we use to distinguish uh, Euler Bernoulli from Timoshenko is the slender ratio, which is based on the geometry and uh, material property. So GAL squared over EI would be the slender ratio. Uh, and it would be your judgment whether you want to use Timoshenko or Euler Bernoulli. You can see for higher slender ratio, let's say for a thousand, the difference between the two is negligible. So the ratio of deflection of using Timoshenko over Euler Bernoulli is almost one. And if you use a lower value, let's say 25, you have 12% error. And if you go down less than 10, then the error would be higher. So usually for slender ratio more than 10, we recommend to use uh, Timoshenko. But in more applications, Euler Bernoulli would be, would be sufficient. So the beam theory can be developed based on the geometry of our beam. If this is the undeformed shape after deformation, our beam is gonna have a curvature. That curvature is gonna have a center and a radius that we call it rho. The center of axis would be the, the same the length will, will not change. The bottom of the beam would be in tension and the top part would be in compression. This is for a positive uh, moment. So would be that this, uh, the radius would be rho. If I cut a segment here and I show it here, the angle would be d theta. I call this x, then x prime would be higher than x because the bottom would be in, in tension and I can find the strains for our, uh, for this segment. So the axial strain would be the final length minus the original length divided by the original length. So x prime would be rho plus y times d theta, and x would be rho times d theta. After simplification, I can find my axial strain based on y, which is the location that I, that I want to find the strength, and y can is, is the distance from uh, the central axis to, to any point. It could be positive, it could be uh, a negative value. And rho is the radius of curvature. So now that I have the strains, I can find the stresses based on the Hooke's law. So if I replace the values, I can find ey over rho. I already know that the stresses uh, for a beam under bending would be mx y over i. So if I set these two equations equal to each other, uh, I can simplify my equations. So I cross out y, and if I rearrange the equations, 1 over rho would be m over i e. And rho is the radius of the curvature, so it depends on the geometry. Mathematically, we can find it based on the deflection. So that's the accurate equation for radius of curvature. But we can sim further simplify that. If the slope is small, then slope squared would be negligible. So that would be zero. That means that the whole denominator would be one. So one over rho would be the second derivative of our deflection. If I set these two equations the same, I can find the beam theory. So this equation, it would be our beam equation. And that's the equation that we are going to use to find beam slope, deflection, shear forces, distributed loading, and so forth. So 
to find any of the other properties we start beam our with our beam equation. If I take a derivative of our my beam equations, I can get the shear load and distributed loading. And if I take integral, I can get slope and deflection. So if I take derivative of moment would be the shear force. So the shear force is related to the third derivative of deflection and another derivative, which makes it the fourth order of deflection. On the other hand, if I take an integral, I get slope here, which has, of course, uh, integration constant and then another integral will give me the deflection and we can find this integral constant by applying boundary condition so here i'm showing you five equation but technically i have one beam equation and any other equation uh, is derived from that by simple derivative or uh, integration here i'm showing you an example let's say our beam is under uh, uh, couple moment if our moment equation is second derivative is a quadratic then the first derivative would be the shear and the derivative of a quadratic would be linear that's why you can see a linear line for shear and then a derivative of the shear force would give me the distributed loading which would be a constant value so constant linear and quadratic and sometimes we start the opposite way. We have the loading, this one would be constant, then our shear would be the linear, and our uh, moment would be quadratic. If I find a slope, it would be the third order, and my deflection should be the fourth order.